Hello again. You can notice that I'm not alone. And I have my panelists here because we will start with a very interesting and I would say a hot topic with our panel discussion. The panel discussion today would be the social dilemma behind cryptocurrencies. I would like to welcome my panelists today and very quickly I would like to introduce you. But I think we have a different approach to this topic, so I, I will just begin with the introduction. First, ladies first, of course, we have Tana Zimmerman. If I'm saying her name, maybe it doesn't ring a bell, but if I mention bazaar.hr, I believe that all of you know what I'm talking about. So Tana is CEO and co-founder of the Bazaar, and they are now, now having a Bitcoin as the payment method. So Tana, welcome. Thank you. Okay, the next one next to me is Boris Agatic. Boris is, according to his LinkedIn profile, the uh, crypto educator and blockchain developer. Uh, because you were actually uh, in a lot of this blockchain uh, and crypto panel discussions so far, I would say that you are one of the biggest experts when it, it comes to education of the cryptocurrencies in Croatia. Thank you. Uh, yes, a great introduction. Oh, great to be here. Thank you. Okay. And last but not least, we have actually a person who is a connection between market and technology. So we have Nikola Škoric. Hello, Nikola. Hello. Nikola is a CEO and founder of Electrocoin, uh, the first, I would say, startup in, in cryptocurrencies in Croatia. And uh, according to Deloitte, if I'm not mistaken, sixth fastest growing company in technology in Central and Eastern Europe. That is correct. Okay, so as I said at the beginning in my introduction, we have totally different approaches here and I'm ready to start the discussion. Are you? Yes. Yes. So, let's go. So at the beginning, um, I would like to ask maybe, uh, Boris, you can tell us what is actually the um, general public opinion about cryptocurrencies in Croatia? In Croatia, uh, so we will see uh, again, uh, right now it's a bull market. This means it's a cycle where the uh, cryptocurrency prices is, are very high and on new uh, records. Uh, and we see many new people, uh, little retail in investors, but also uh, companies, organizations and institutional investors are uh, jumping on the Bitcoin wagon. So I think the sentiment is really positive. We see an emerging market and emerging technology. Um, but uh, since I, I'm, I'm doing now workshops for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain technology for five years, uh, and I see uh, really big companies are jumping now, are, are interested, and we see all the headlines in the news. Uh, more and more companies, big companies are buying a stack of, of cryptocurrency. So I, I, get to, uh, I guess we will talk about a little bit uh, on this topic, what's going on right now. But the interesting thing really is, four, five years ago, it was really the little retail investors that are uh, uh, investing and speculating and uh, using the technology. Now it's uh, it's a little bit more uh, on the on the business side. So we have companies and yeah. And in Croatia, you you also see the increase opening of uh, this this little crypto wallet. So this software that is communicating with the blockchain. And uh, I'm really optimistic and to, uh, and to, I see really big potential in this technology for for every citizen here in Croatia. Um, you mentioned actually that a lot of big companies, for example, as Tesla and so on, are now investing even in, in this, um, becoming a, uh, shareholders of, of uh, cryptocurrencies. So would you, um, would you explain us why do you think it's the case right now? Well, um, I, I think there are several really distinct and different reasons for uh, for this uh, rather recent entrance of uh, bigger companies into into the cryptocurrency space first is um, of course big banks um, and financial institutions are are uh, entering the the cryptocurrency space uh, for the last year because it finally um, dawned on them that crypto cryptocurrencies are here to stay uh, because crypto uh, uh, in last 10 years, as long as it exists, had a 
several uh, boom and bust cycles. And the last one, uh, peaking in 2007, early 2018, um, was followed, uh, last boom was followed, of course, by, by bust, by uh, cryptocurrencies losing 90% of, uh, of, um, of their price, uh, which was, of course, once again, a proof uh, for the traditional industry that uh, cryptocurrencies and the whole blockchain technology don't make sense, they're the volatile, they, they, will, um, they will fall apart. But then through 2019 and 2019, uh, cryptocurrency industry again recovered uh, and uh, started surpassing um, the highs of 2017 and 2018. And I think this is the point where um, the traditional finance industry uh, realized that uh, all this market is something that cannot be ignored. So, uh, for instance, the biggest bank uh, in the world, JP Morgan Chase, their CEO, Jamie Dimon, in 2017 was one of the most vocal opponents of Bitcoin, um, uh, formulating messages like, uh, it's you only for money laundering and and uh, drugs and whatever trafficking um, and then uh, in the first half of last year in uh, I think in May 2020 um, uh, JP Morgan Chase opened the bank account for the biggest uh, American um, uh, crypto companies and then uh, in the later that year they f for the first time gave a green light uh, or um, uh, a, a, a nice nice price prediction for Bitcoin telling their customers Customers, they can expect uh, a Bitcoin price to grow to one hundred fifty dollars, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in 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 the midterm. So this shows that um, financial uh, industry uh, finally realized that crypto and blockchain industry is here to stay. Then on the other hand, we have. Um, uh, general purpose companies uh, that in in this monetar situation. Um, where cash basically lost all of its value. So uh, we live in a world where uh, like normal people uh, have issues getting uh, getting credit and getting their hands on money, but uh, the biggest companies in the world can get cash for basically for, for free, or, or even some banks pay them to take their, their money. So uh, big companies don't care how much cash they have because they don't need it, they can get, get it really cheaply. So they figured, okay, we have this like pile of cash that does nothing. Um, where can we store this value? How can we combat inflation? Because uh, if you buy land in 50 years, uh, it's gonna, uh, yeah, it's gonna drop, drop in price. Uh, if you buy whatever you buy, if you buy gold, it's gonna lose value. Um, and it turns out that uh, Bitcoin has this nice property. There's just 21 uh, million Bitcoin. It, uh, now it's 18, but uh, 21 million Bitcoin is the top limit. It's not possible to to uh, create more than 21 million. So uh, some of the uh, some of the CEOs of the biggest companies realized, okay, so we can put our money. Uh, into Bitcoin and be sure that in 100 years there will no more Bitcoin will be printed. Uh, value of Bitcoin will not be debased. And I think that uh, Michael Sellier, the CEO of Micro, um, uh, MicroStrategy, was the first one they started publicly speaking about that. And then Elon Musk followed, and this created this whole c hype. And in not not only in in high tech industry, but basically in in a lot of listed publicly listed companies in the US. So those are maybe just two different reasons uh, that 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 are fueling this this growth there are, i guess several more that are equally distinct as, as as those two thank you and since you were brave enough and actually the first web shops uh, general general purpose web shop in croatia who actually um, included bitcoin as the payment method what would you say that it, uh, what was the feedback of the customers and um, did you have any um, uh, obstacles, including the, the, the Bitcoin as a payment method at Bazaar? Uh, so, uh, Bazaar, together with ElectroCoin, uh, introduced uh, the possibility of uh, paying with Bitcoin, but not just Bitcoin, all other cryptocurrencies that uh, ElectroCoin is uh, supporting. So, uh, why did we do it? We, we uh, our... Our uh, th thinking is that we need to offer to our customers uh, all the payment methods uh, possible. So uh, we already had six payment methods be before we uh, accept started accepting cryptocurrency. I must say I did not know what to expect. I didn't know if 
uh, I should expect one, three, five, or 3,000 orders the first day, um, and what will happen. Uh, but what we are happy to, to see is that uh, customers are reacting uh, very good. Uh, many people are trying to, to buy. Uh, we can we can check see that with the amounts that are being paid. Um, it's popular in Croatia to test the web shop uh, with buying something uh, cheap like uh, 50 kunas or something like that. And uh, we noticed that uh, customers are reacting uh, quite quite good. And what we are also noticing is that the, uh, people are coming back. So they tried once, they paid with cryptocurrency. Um, as far as I got the data, it's mostly used. Uh, it's, Bitcoin is the most uh, widespread uh, used, but uh, people are coming back. So they, they uh, ordered once. Everything is fine, um, and then they, they are returning uh, to, the, to the site again. So we are we are happy uh, when we believe that it will increase significantly uh, quite soon. Um, Nicola mentioned one very interesting thing. He said that um, um, cryptocurrencies were perceived as something to buy, you know, um, weapons or drugs and so on. What? What people mo uh, buy the most at Bazaar with cryptocurrencies? Uh, well, I was analyzing. I mean, they're, they're really buying a, a large variety of products. Uh, but what I must say is that uh, we have a lot of wine, uh, craft beer, uh, but also Electrocoin is also uh, working with craft uh, craft beer producers. So I guess it's kind of kind of connected. But we had really a wide range of products uh, from uh, dishwashers, uh, fridges. Uh, we had some fashion. Um, you know, it was a really uh, a mix of uh, mix of products because, uh, as I mentioned, people you know when they when they buy the first time they're trying with something uh, small, and then later on, Bazaar has a really wide uh, assortment, so they can buy whatever they want. But I assure you, it's not drugs, and it's not weapons, and it's not not anything illegal because, of course, we are selling only legal products. Yeah, yeah that's what I wanted to ask. It yeah. means that you don't have it on your. No, we don't. We don't sell that. <laughs> Um, Tana mentioned actually that um, the she, she expects actually uh, to um, the, the increase of um, the payment or, or the uh, knowledge of the payment method with crypt cryptocurrencies. Um, from the educator perspective, as you are one um, or one-stop shop when it comes to to educating public about uh, cryptocurrencies, what what would you say? Um, how many or not how many people know about cryptocurrencies but uh, what are the biggest issues or the first questions that people coming with when they're um, asking you to educate them about yeah, the blockchain Great technology. question. Uh, so the most people are really uh, exposed to the price. So uh, And the most people are really interested in speculating, investing, uh, and a little m more more uh, portion is going for, let's say, blockchain develop development and stuff like that. So students are really interested in IT students in blockchain development. But yes, um, the most people are really seeing that something new is uh, around. We uh, we can even speak about a, a, a little uh, black swan technology. So Bitcoin uh, started, uh, that this is the first application of blockchain uh, 12 years uh, ago and really it, it was like a snowball effect and now we have really different blockchains that are uh, solving different uh, problems, right? So Bitcoin, uh, Nicola mentioned it, uh, people see it and investors see it as a store of value. So Bitcoin has this characteristic really good i think better than like money fiat money fiat is euros dollars kunas so people are uh, searching for something uh, that is really keeping their value so you don't lose uh, purchasing power so bitcoin is the, the narrative of bitcoin is really uh, this uh, on the other side uh, of course we we, we have a payment pro pro uh, processors and nicolas uh, paysec which is really really good i have uh, many many queries uh, regarding to integrate it to web shops to I don't know uh, um, uh, uh, hostels hotels uh, in different industries. So I think we we see last and this year really an increase of the utility of cryptocurrency, not just speculating and investing. I see nothing uh, uh, wrong about speculating. It, it, of course, it, uh, people are attract to, to, to investing and speculating. But on the other side, we have these other uh, network effects like utility. So Bitcoin has also utility, but not many people are speaking about utility. So more is 
still still uh, speculating and and uh, investment but uh, of, of course this is also a really really important uh, network effect i think what would you say is the biggest difference between fiat current fiat currencies and cryptocurrencies uh, of course uh, bitcoin so cryptocurrencies the first application of blockchain technology uh, is uh, is decentralized this is a, a really uh, in, uh, interesting and important uh, characteristic it's open it's neutral it's censorship resistant on the other side we have I don't know fiat money and uh, for example uh, the US dollar uh, and this is centralized uh, and the authority guys who are uh, 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 speaking about I don't know supply and we see there is they are printing now for the past few months uh, so many dollars uh, and uh, spread it to the to the economy for example in the US uh, on the other side uh, we mentioned Bitcoin is predictable. I know the supply, I know the, the limit of 21 million uh, coins on this network, so uh, it is easier to make some decisions, let's say. So that's the reason, uh, again, investing is cool. I also invest uh, some of my uh, kunas into Bitcoin, but on the other side, I think technology is, is really groundbreaking. Um, I cannot uh, not notice that when you... Um, um, address to cryptocurrencies, mostly you address to Bitcoin. And I think it's also a public opinion that, you know, cryptocurrencies equals Bitcoin. But Nicola, can you explain us what um, it takes for some crypto, uh, cryptocurrency to actually become a cryptocurrency and why we have so many different cryptocurrencies crypto right now and uh, why the Bitcoin is still, you know, number one right now when we are talking about a crypto in, in, in general? Um, so uh, the first part of the question was um, what, it, what it takes to, 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 uh, for a cryptocurrency to be crypto cryptocurrency. Um, so uh, uh, as Boris already mentioned, um, cryptocurrencies have several properties. Um, probably the most, most important one is they are uh, decentralized. Um, so the name of the first paper written on cryptocurrencies was Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic uh, cash system. So in, in the name, probably the most interesting word is peer-to-peer. -peer. So the point of cryptocurrencies is you are able to send them from one person to another uh, without having a third party. Because if I want to send you money, I would now probably do it uh, through a banking application or some kind of wallet. Um, their uh, electronic wallets are now booming uh, in Croatia and in, in Europe and in the whole world. So I would probably use uh, some of those uh, electronic wallet applications. And those, all of those use um, third parties, be it banks or uh, some kind, other kind of credit institution or basically PayPal, uh, which is also a certain, uh, centralized. Um, uh, service. So the whole point of cryptocurrency is that they are decentralized and I can send my money from me to, for instance, a web shop uh, without going uh, through, uh, as Boris mentioned, those uh, transactions are censorship resistant. Nobody can stop me to send money from me to a web shop. So I guess this would be um, the most, probably the most important characteristics of uh, cryptocurrencies. Why are there so many of them? Uh, because you can easily make them. Uh, for instance, if you want to start a bank, uh, there has not been a new bank in Croatia for the last 20 years uh, because it's not simple to start a bank. Uh, in, even if you get the regulatory approval and stuff like that, you have to buy software. You cannot go just and uh, copy-paste software of a bank and have yourself a bank at home. That, that's not how things work. Uh, but for cryptocurrency, all of the code is open. You can just don't download code of Bitcoin from the web and and make a, just change something and launch your own, just change the name and, you know, uh, leap coin or whatever and just start a brand new cryptocurrency. It can be done in like five minutes. And uh, yeah, people for some reason like doing that. <laughs> yeah, so because I, I know, I'm not an expert in, in, the, in this field, obviously, as especially not at your level, but I saw that some of cryptocurrencies are actually presented as uh, false cryptocurrencies, but still, you know, the value is going up. And I, I, I just like, would like to know what's the uh, reason for that. 
Well, the, yeah, that's the million dollar question. Uh, we are unfortunately don't have the the crystal uh, ball, but uh, from from experience and from history, what we can learn is, for instance, um, one of the like I think now it's top five cryptocurrencies is uh, called Dogecoin, which is basically that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, <laughs> uh, there's basically there was basically some guy from Australia that uh, you know uh, took a co uh, source code of Bitcoin and changed the name to a funny name and put a funny logo and changed several uh, configuration files just so it's uh, so it's funnier and started it as a joke and now some eight eight years after he's of course been out of the project for like five years because he started as a joke and then left it and now people are buying it like crazy why uh well as i as boris already mentioned it, it's highly speculative market so uh, people are doing it for fun and people are basically doing it uh for gambling purposes also uh so you cannot uh this is why a traditional uh financial industry was trying to avoid cryptocurrencies for so long because Wall Street is not gambling. That's serious finance, you know. <laughs> and cryptocurrencies are gambling. I must say I don't I don't subscribe 100% uh, uh, to this narrative. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot uh, for uh, for you to be uh, institutional investor or professional investor in uh, uh, on the stock market. There are quite a lot of hurdles. You have to uh, you have to have a lot of money. You have to write tests. To be a professional investor, you you have to pass exams, and f to start uh, investing in cryptocurrencies, you, you don't need anything. You just go uh, on R or any other service and just buy cryptocurrencies. So this is this is uh, uh, this is the big difference. And uh, even in professional, uh, at professional with professional traders and at the grown-up uh, stock exchanges, you cannot predict what's going to happen with why is Tesla growing. Well, what's the point? Yeah, what's what's the thing with Tesla? Nobody knows, you know. People just like buying Tesla, um, and in cryptocurrencies, it's it's much more uh, it's much more amplified. Yeah. Um, Tana, now we actually started a, a very interesting um, um, question. Let's say that like this uh, about the future of uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, how do you see it will affect the market, and do you see it as becoming you know equal to the traditional? finance uh, um, world? Well, if you would ask me this question a few years ago, I would probably say that I don't know. Uh, but uh, seeing what happens, and especially this uh, comparison with Tesla, uh, I think it's a very good thing. So pretty much whatever Elon Musk uh, tweets uh, becomes a, a thing <laughs> in, in, a, in a matter of minutes. So I'm definitely, uh, with my limited knowledge of cryptocurrency, I'm uh, quite positive that it will significantly increase. Uh, you can you can even see in other platforms such as Revolut and others, you can see that you know people want change. People don't want these traditional banks that you need to you know um, that you cannot pay a, a, a pay to a different bank because it's you know it's three it's past three thirty uh, or it's a Friday. Uh, so I don't know. For example, we were when we were paying to our customers um, or actually suppliers in the EU. We cannot pay pay them on Friday because it's on Friday there are no transactions. Like what? Um, and then cryptocurrency uh, eliminates all that, and people uh, are more and more uh, understanding. They 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 want freedom. They don't want to be you know in some uh, old school buckets because just you know because someone said it that way. So um, I think this will explode um, in you know in the next couple of years. I mean I don't have a crystal ball to know when or how it's going to happen. Um, but I'm sure this is going to be, uh, you know, something, a new normal in a couple of years. Yeah, new normal, hashtag, new, yeah. new, <laughs> new buzzword that we are using. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you, um, or from what I see it as a third person who is not involved in this world, is that um, actually a lot of tweets or media coverage um, increased the, the value of, of cryptocurrencies in general. So why do you think... Um, it's it's happening and can we say it actually it's decentralized in 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 total if we are having so much impact of the public to the to the value of the cryptocurrencies uh, again great question um thank you we see we see uh, bitcoin uh, past the uh, uh, the total capital mar uh, 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 value of one trillion dollars 
Uh, if we compare to, to, to gold, uh, which is uh, thousands of years around, uh, it is still a little market because gold is, I think, 10 or 11 trillions uh, today. Uh, so, of course, we have uh, uh, external news and external factors that are really can uh, uh, change the price. Like Elon Musk is tweeting something positive about Bitcoin or Dogecoin or, or vice versa. So, yes, we, we I think, again, uh, Tana said it, uh, in a few years, it will be even a more uh, bigger, a compact, a more re robust and resilient uh, market. So maybe we will also decrease the volatility. We have now Bitcoin, J Jamie Dimon, the J JP Morgan uh, CEO say, says, 2017, uh, Bitcoin is a scam. I don't want to allow my brokers to, to trade around, etc. Everyone will get fired. Now what they're doing, they uh, want a share of the cake, so they are doing custodian accounts and uh, investors are really won't be exposed to, to something even highly speculative like uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that's my answer. I hope I answered it correctly. Okay, thank you. Um, since uh, Tana mentioned actually that people want freedom or they want to be um, detached from, from standard banking systems, um, how do you see the government um, um, policy here? Or do you think that, uh, for example, in India, th that there is a proposal of a law that it will ban a cryptocurrency or just uh, not letting people to have any kind of digital assets? Do you see it as a possible scenario? And what do you think that will, how people will react if this scenario happens? Well, yes, I, I see this scenario uh, happening because a few days ago there was uh, uh, news of a new initiative, uh, I think it was um, European Commission uh, initiative to uh, limit uh, cash transactions uh, to uh, 10,000 euros. Uh, so you basically would not be able uh, to transact between two people legally. Trans uh, so right now in Croatia, for instance, you cannot buy anything for cash uh, in value of more than uh, 10,000 euros. So right now this cap already exists in Croatia for buying from companies. Uh, you have to do it over a bank account using a ba banking infrastructure. So n now they are openly discussing a proposal to ban all of the transactions in cash um, uh, larger than uh, than 10,000 10, euro be euros because of their um, money laundering reasons and stuff like that. Um, we already got reaction from Austria. Uh, Austrians and Germans are um, uh, quite no, no known to be quite fond of cash, and they already uh, had one initiative, one uh, referendum for uh, uh, um, uh, putting their right to use cash into the constitution. So, of course, uh, Austrian Ministry of Finance already issued um, uh, their statement that they're preparing to, to, to fight that because they know they, they're going to lose power if they don't. Uh, the fact is, People like using cash for whatever reason. Uh, most people are not criminals. That's that's a given. Uh, but uh, we've seen um, in the last few decades increasing pressure from regulators um, painting, painting cash or anonymous transactions as something you really have no reason to use if you're not a criminal. Which, uh, as I said, which is which is not so true simply because most people are not criminals. Eighty-three percent of all transactions in uh, 2020 um, in in Croatia were cash transactions. That, that's data from from Croatian Central Bank. Um, uh, on, on Western Balkans, uh, Austria, Germany, but even countries uh, like Japan, people have really, uh, really, uh, they, they are used to using cash. They want to use cash. Nordic countries, in I think I think in Norway, less than one percent of transactions are in cash. Cool, nice. Uh, they have a different culture. Uh, they don't like cash. They like electronic payments. Fine, uh, but. There are some countries, and it's not like just we on the Balkans are backwater. We are uh, we, we are hiding the cash yeah, inside of the ma mattress. Yeah, we, we don't know how to use technology because Germans and uh, and uh, like in Japan, I, a few years ago I was in Japan. They have really high tech machinery for handling cash, because it's not that they have. They don't have technology, they do. Uh, so if we are seeing uh, regulators trying to basically outlaw cash, then I think answer to your question is we could see regulators also trying to uh, to uh, outlaw crypto because, let me repeat, the, the title of the first cryptocurrency 
uh, document was peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash because that's what cryptocurrencies were in the beginning. Uh, so, of course, uh, everywhere where you have volatility, price volatility, so price is going up, price is going down, there's going to be people who want to invest, who want to turn a quick buck. So that's why our, why people are buying uh, crypto now. They want to, you know, buy low, say high, uh, sell high. But the the original idea of cryptocurrencies was creating electronic cash. And that's why uh, we uh, created this payment processor and that's why we are offering them uh, this payment processor to the to companies like Bazaar and trying to allow them to uh, to receive payments in cryptocurrency because that's the point, that's the whole point, mm -hmm. the original point of cryptocurrencies, to allow people to make payments peer-to-peer uh, -peer because people want to make peer-to-peer -peer payments without third parties being involved. And I, um, my opinion is that we are going to see um, quite a lot of pressure from regulators to eliminate those kinds of payments because it, it makes the, their job much easier. You know, if, if you have an anonymous transactions, that of course includes higher risk of, um, of money laundering and financing of terrorism. But it also are the, actually the, the, the cryptocurrencies, the transaction, really anonymous? Uh, for all of the intents and purposes, yes. Uh, for instance, if you use cash, uh, if you write down the serial number of the banknote, then it's not anonymous, you know, but I mean, if I gave you 100 kunas, nobody's going to know. So let's say it is anonymous. And in that, that sense, cryptocurrencies are not anonymous. They're pseudonymous. They're almost anonymous. But for practical uh, uh, applications, yes, they are. And that is the reason why they make uh, regulators' job hard. But I think that we, of course, need to uh, equally value or even uh, more value the, the freedom of people to use their money we need to value that freedom more than the ease of doing the regulator job. Because, you know, if we put the matter into perspe perspective, uh, they're basically here to, to serve us. It's not the other way around. So the, the freedom to transact and to have, if I want to have anonymous transactions, because it's none of your uh, business to know why, you know, and if those transactions are legal, uh, well, I think we all can agree uh, that that should be allowed. Okay, um, I think we are actually getting a quite into to a, um, actually a topic of our of our panel discussion. But before we get to the social impact of the, of the uh, cryptocurrencies and and just um, um, already mentioned uh, some of the, the the questions that are are now arise, I would like to ask you, Tana, do you see other cryptocurrencies also becoming uh, um, payment method on bazaar or? A, in markets in Croatia in general and um, as you said you know you see it as a new big thing um, what do you how do you see um, um, the new cryptocurrencies will be uh, um, also included and what do you think it's a time frame uh, if we are talking about Croatia um, so we are using uh, PISEC. Uh, did I say correctly in English? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, so we are actually not not the one processing uh, the cryptocurrency, regardless of the of uh, which one it is. So um, I'm sure you will add new cryptocurrency cryptocurrencies uh, when they will. Uh, Dogecoin, for example. For example, working on it. Oh well, yeah. Okay. So um, we even had uh, had some initiatives uh, to to create our own maybe cryptocurrency. I mean, that, I I think that's a that's a that's a far 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 uh, idea. Uh, but uh, whatever cryptocurrency will become popular, whatever cryptocurrency will be uh, in electro coin, Bazaar will be happy to you know accept it. So there is there is really no reason for us to accept one cryptocurrency and not to accept the other. Um, so definitely, we are we are interested in everything. I I hope you heard that, and we are waiting yeah. for it to happen. Yeah, so, so Nicola, that, please hurry up so we can use other cryptocurrencies as well. Yeah. Uh, Boris, I would like to ask you um, and to start a little bit about the social impact. Um, 
how do you see, you know, the, the <laughs> you're, you're making a, uh, you know, face like I'm going to ask something, uh, something hard. I'm not. I just wanted to ask, you know, we, we talked about decentralized, you know, uh, currency. We talked about uh, anonymous transactions. Uh, what do you see as the biggest social impact that cryptocurrencies have? And uh, how do you see that affecting Croatia in the long term run? So, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, w w we may maybe not mentioned, but one of the interesting things is uh, cryptocurrencies are radical transparent. So, for, the, for example, the Bitcoin, let's say it's a payment network. It's uh, with a native currency, with, with the, the same named uh, currency, Bitcoin. Uh, it is transparent. I can uh, see every transaction, every address, every block that is uh, mined and so on. Uh, that on was the other I, side... I was addressing that when I asked, do you see it really as an anonymous transaction? Yeah, it, it is open. I can, I can analyze and uh, do things with with the whole network, so it is really uh, uh, transparent and open. On the other side, yes, we see it is a pseudonymous uh, network. We can uh, uh, use money and have a, a, a full control of the money. And that's, the, that, that's one of the philosophical sides that I like about uh, cryptocurrencies, that uh, uh, when, it's, when, I, when my wallet is communicating with the Bitcoin block ch blockchain, I'm in full control. And if I know what, I, what I'm doing, uh, everything is fine. So. Uh, Bitcoin, similar to the internet, we, we see uh, a few years go by until the user experience is so easy to use and people can, uh, today, even my parents are using email, WhatsApp, uh, but uh, imagine, uh, imagine that uh, they have to use internet or, or email uh, protocols uh, 25 years back, 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 back ago in the 90s. Uh, it, 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 they couldn't manage that. So uh, I think... Again, in cryptocurrency, the wallets are getting better, the user experience is uh, much better right now. And yeah, people are uh, really educating and they are hooked to this technology because of the good uh, points that uh, cryptocurrencies bring to us, like peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, pay payment, payment networks. So it is really like I'm paying cash just over the internet to anyone in the, in the, uh, in the world. And uh, I like, the again, so many things, so many new layers here. I'm not now for five years in, in this industry, and uh, at least one a week, once a week, I'm, my mind is blown. Something new is coming up. Uh, people are really... Uh, creating, generating, or let's say, uh, they came up with new architectures for some new coin. Uh, they came up with new uh, topologies. So, so we don't have to watch the things in the past. Let's say banking. All of us need need banking. So, uh, banking is here to stay. But uh, really, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency can really bring up on a new level. So you can have micro payments. You can pay. You, you can be paid by, by the minute or millisecond even. You can uh, do so many interesting stuffs, uh, stuff and this is what excited me about cryptocurrency uh, and uh, of, of course uh, other people uh, around. Uh, all the new uh, possibilities, all the new uh, uh, innovation that is really happening. So maybe you heard of the, uh, of the term uh, skeuomorphic design, shadow of the past. We, we're always trying to, uh, uh, with new technology, uh, bring something up from the past. I don't know if in iPhone it is, for example, the, the, the address book, the contact book. It looks really like a little leather address book, like a physical one. So this is skeuomorphic design. We bring something from the past in new digital worlds. So with cryptocurrency, we really have the power to, to uh, come up with new systems. And I think this is really, really exciting. Really exciting times uh, for everyone. Uh, again, we need banking. Yeah, th that's what I wanted to ask. Um, we see now that um, the wallets, digital wallets, are connected to the physical cards and to ATMs and so on. So do you see the cryptocurrencies as the future of money in distant future, you know, becoming the only um, currencies that we are known of? Or you see it as a mixture of traditional banking together with, with uh, other payment methods? Well, I, I highly doubt... Um anything will be the, the sole future of money because uh, people still still use checks for some reason. In Croatia as well. Yeah, uh, well, yeah in Croatia. Uh, no, I, I don't think in Croatia. I mean, uh, I know a person who just received two days ago a check from uh, the, Her Royal Majesty's tax service because uh, 
uh, British tax, ta tax service still sends money by checks, and you, I think there's only one bank in Croatia that, that accepts checks still. But for instance, if you transact uh, with the US, uh, they uh, they are big on checks. They still use quite a lot of checks, uh, and it, checks refuse to die. And uh, yeah, I think that in 50 years we'll still uh, we'll never have just a single way of paying for stuff. And um, I of course believe that cryptocurrencies uh, will uh, be a big part of this mix. We wouldn't be in the business if we uh, if we don't. And um, I'm I'm really thankful, uh, you know. T to visionaries uh, like Tana, because uh, her company will not get rich from uh, accepting crypto right now. Uh, but we in the crypto industry have this chicken and egg problem. Uh, as, as Boris already mentioned, we are still in the process of building the ecosystem. Uh, yeah, I, of course, I pay a lot with crypto, but all of the existing wallets are, um, so what's the polite term, not, not very good. <laughs> uh, they, we, we, uh, they have technical issues. They're slow. They're laggy. They're they have issues. So we need better wallets, you know. And better wallets will not be created if there is no demand for them. If nobody's paying with crypto, and nobody will be paying with crypto if there are uh, no web shops uh, like Bazaar who offer crypto. So you know, it's it's a vicious circle. Uh, that is broken by companies like ours producing the tools and companies like Tanas, uh, which are accepting crypto payments. And I think we have a really good thing going uh, because we see um, a really nice uptick. We, we saw uh, a growth in uh, in the crypto payments industry before bull run. So it's not that crypto payments are growing because the price is growing. The crypto payments were growing through 2018 uh, while the price of crypto was falling. So uh, people are understanding the benefits of paying with peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash uh, without with, with, with the tools for payment still being rudimentary. So um, in the next few years, our company is one of hundreds of companies in the world working on this payment technology. So I guess in a few years, we'll uh, finally have tools that are you know, on the level, on par with the current Banking payment applications uh, from from you know uh, from big banks uh, uh, having uh, gigantic budgets for creating those those payment wallets. So I see uh, the share of cryptocurrencies um, in in payment industry only increasing because of this nature that uh, Boris was 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 mentioning. This cryptocurrencies are. You know they are yours. You, nobody. You know it's it's just yours. Like for instance, cash. Cash is yours. You have it in your wallet, and if you want to take my money, you have to come here and get it for me. You know. Uh, on the other hand, uh, money in the bank is 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 not under your control. It's somebody else's control. So, uh, as already mentioned, people here on the Balkans and Austria and and Germany, they want this notion of ha having their own money, and uh, I think that this uh, let's put it. That way, attack on cash will probably result in an uh, even bigger push for cryptocurrencies. So yeah, I think that cryptocurrencies definitely um, are basically at the start uh, of their you know deeper penetration into into payment systems. Uh, but I I doubt they will you know win because I don't think anybody will win, and uh, we shouldn't be surprised if we see checks in 50 years also. <laughs> I hope <laughs> it will not look like this, but uh, thank you for the question. Uh, thank you for your answer. Uh, Tana, I want to ask you uh, from the market perspective or from a marketer perspective, what was the uh, what do you see as the biggest uh, advantage uh, of uh, including the cryptocurrencies as the payment method? And what would you, if you know we have any of the other uh, web shops that are uh, watching us, what do you, uh, what would you su suggest to them? You know what would be the first step and um, what do you see as advantage for them for using cryptocurrencies? Okay, so uh, I think the, uh, from the customer's perspective, uh, the best thing about using cryptocurrency is it's easy. It's so easy. Uh, so Bazaar has uh, seven payment uh, seven payment option, options, six if you don't count our own wallets, uh, which is by definition the easiest way because you just you just gonna go go, grow to, go through the checkout. But uh, by using Bitcoin already under cryptocurrency, you come to this step when you need to pay. You select crypto. Um, if you're on your phone and 85 percent of our customers are buying over the the phone, you just slide like an iPhone, and you paid. 
and it's done. Um, so, you know, your, your order is uh, immediately processed, it's immediately sent to the uh, shop, it's immediately uh, sent, and you don't have anything to worry about. Especially in a market, uh, in Croatia, for example, where Bazaar has the least uh, percentage, but some, some statistics say that 65 to 75% of all web shops' uh, uh, revenues are paid with uh, cash and delivery. So imagine you buying, um, I don't know, something expensive or, or even cheap, doesn't, it doesn't even matter. You don't know when it's going to come. Then you get a message that your courier is coming. You have to be home. You have, have to, to have cash. You have to have cash. You have to have no, exact cash or quite similar to the exact amount of cash. Um, and the, the person on the other side needs to return you that and all of that. Plus... Um, all the courier services and in Croatian Post, they're charging this service about five to six kunas. So, okay, it's not, maybe it's not a lot of money, uh, but why? Why, why, would you, why would you pay that? Uh, second, uh, second thing is uh, if you can also accept credit cards on your webshop, but it's not easy. Uh, it was easy up to some point, but now you have 3D Secure, so you come there, and you need to get a token. And, and, and you're on the same phone, so you need to yeah, you know, switch between the, the tabs. Yeah. So depending on which banker you're using, it's not going to work. Um, you know, especially we're trying to get our moms and uh, grandmothers to, to use that, and uh, I can already see her, oh my God, this is so annoying. I'm just going to pay in cash. So, But imagine if I can you know, have a, a crypto wallet on her phone and just show her. Show, show her, just slide. You know, you paid and everything is uh, everything is done. And from the perspective of uh, of uh, sellers, uh, of course, they need to be you know open minded. You know, it's not like you know first day you're gonna have thousands and thousands of orders paid paid in Bitcoin, uh, but it's increasing significantly. Um, the money is uh, on your account quite fast, much faster than any credit card, much faster than um, any other. The payment um, payment method, and uh, it's almost uh, with no commission at all, or I would say no commission at all. Perfect. And um, as Nicola mentioned, that we are cash culture. Um, can you please tell us a little bit uh, more about? You are a member of um, association for blockchain and and Ubi. cryptocurrency. Yes, exactly. Can you please tell us a bit uh, more about the association and how do you see it? Uh, you know becoming important in the in the educational phase that we are facing right now or even more in the future? So Sure, uh, our organization UBIC, uh, it is uh, uh, the biggest uh, association here in Croatia, not the only one, but uh, Nicola is one of the founding members, elders. Um, yeah, so we, we're speaking with uh, with the regulators, we are uh, speaking with the public and uh, hold meetups and, and so on. So. So people can uh, ask us anything about cryptocurrency because, uh, again, uh, this is a new technology. This is a new market. Uh, sometimes they, or, or often, they have uh, questions regarding to uh, regulation, to taxes, and so on. So they can ping us, and we will help. We will be glad to help. Uh, 2019, I think it was over 20 events, uh, meetups for for the public. Uh, everyone can join, learn something new. Uh, not about ju just about cryptocurrency, but on blockchain technology. How is this uh, a uh, game changer, maybe, and to, in which industries you can uh, apply those technologies? And th does it make any sense to use blockchain on every corner of the internet? So yeah, yeah. And one one really uh, important uh, thing about uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, so uh, it's not like the, there is no regulation. So we have, of course, some uh, regulation and some uh, laws and on, on frames that uh, really are applicable to cryptocurrency. Uh, Hanfa, our regulator in Croatia, is also they have uh, tech and crypto savvy people that are really open and talk with us with with our organization. And yeah, we we. we we are really proud of our work in, in, the, in the association and uh, it is really fun. I think Nicola will agree that the people and the whole ecosystem in Croatia and all the market is, it is really, really much fun. How big the, the scene is? How many members do you have? Nicola, about... Yeah, uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know, a few hundred. Uh, well, last meetup, 
uh, there was more than 100 people uh, so it was uh, hybrid hybrid meetup meetup so uh, w together with online people it was more than 100 people attending the meetup um, so yeah but the number of members a few hundred but I let's say um, hundred ish uh, active members yes that that's quite well, I didn't expect that you have 100 members interesting in this topic and I'm really glad to hear that um, um, Tana, I would like to ask you uh, now with the with you know digitalization in every part, especially in, with, with the Corona situation, with a lot of people staying at home, you know, and using the, the web shops maybe even more than than before. Do you see that it's um, you know somehow connected also with the with the cryptocurrency uh, knowledge and you, more of usage, or you don't see the the connection between those two? Sorry, do you mean the connection between more usage of uh, e-commerce? Exactly. Uh, well, I I would be uh, happy that that would be the reason, uh, but I don't think it's I don't think it's uh, it's the reason. Uh, but uh, yes, this, that you mentioned uh, the lockdown that happened last year definitely uh, uh, this digital transformation uh, ex uh, exploded. So uh, when you compare, for example, in Croatia, uh, the share of uh, e-commerce in GDP is, uh, depending on what data you're really looking at, but it's like one, one and a half, two percent. For example, in 2019 in UK, it was 27%. So you can imagine where they are today. Uh, the, the official data is still not there, but it's probably uh, over 30, 40 percent. So you can see how um, there is a lot of room for improvement in Croatia, there is a lot of uh, uh, new, uh, new revenues going through e-commerce that will go through. Uh, some data uh, from, I think, Merrill Lynch says that by 2025, Croatia will be where UK is today. So that's, uh, that's four years from now. Uh, so definitely Corona opened up eyes to the people who were maybe not uh, so tech savvy. Uh, they tried uh, e-commerce uh, in different ways, not, not just online shopping like Bazaar has, but in different ways. Uh, uh, we had the food ordering and everything, and definitely crypto and all this buzz around crypto is probably, you know, helping in, in a way that uh, um, people are understanding this technology maybe more, they are uh, reading about it, they are educating themselves. But I, I wouldn't say that, you know, uh, crypto uh, is still has, has an impact uh, on, on our e-commerce, but I really, really hope uh, it will in the future. Perfect. Um, I would like to know um, when when I talk about you know crypto and one of the biggest question marks or the biggest um, let's say suspicions that people have is value of the crypto and with which is connected. You know, if you are talking about cash or something, you have gold, you have this, and you have assets and so on. So, what is the asset or the value of the cryptocurrencies? Um. Yeah, well, th that's a really hard question. Um, that question is uh, uh, a bit easier when you're talking about companies because they produce stuff. But but valuing companies is also very hard. Uh, most people can do it. Most professional investors um, do it badly. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's why we have two of you. And <laughs> no, I also do it badly uh, because it's it's very it's very hard to uh, to compete with the market, you know, um, which means that basically most people don't know how to uh, how to properly value a company uh, because it's complicated. And then valuing something uh, that doesn't have a, a business supporting it, like Bitcoin. There's no company be behind Bitcoin. There are no revenues behind Bitcoin. Uh, it's really then it's even much harder. To value Bitcoin, so there are several ways to do that. Um, and one of those I already mentioned is um, because uh, there is a fina finite amount of Bitcoin, so it's gonna it's not gonna be printed, you know, like forever. So most people are trying to value Bitcoin for that. Uh, me um, personally, I try to value it for the payment services. It provides uh, so it allows you to have decentralized payments. It it allows you to have basically cash like payments, and for me that's the f that's the foundation foundational value of, of cryptocurrencies. And then if you take another step, I don't even really care for the value of cryptocurrencies to be able to make payments because uh, there are now cryptocurrencies that are tied to the value of dollar of euro or whatever, which basically has a 
a stable value and you can make decentralized peer-to-peer -peer, anonymous trustless payments with a crypto token that's always valued at one euro and at that point uh, yeah for payment purposes the price basically is not even a factor anymore and from the discussion we we just had uh, i think it's quite obvious that we are more fo more focused on the payment part than on the on the investing part that that is currently you know 99% of of the crypto of the crypto industry so maybe the 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 right answer from me would be i i'm not really i don't really care about how price is formed uh, because uh, for the payment network we are trying to build that's not relevant okay we um i think we really um got the different um let's say point of views in in this discussion so you started the the discussion you will end it as well can you tell me uh, um what would be the conclusion of our today discussion or how do you see the social impact of crypto um, um, becoming a thing and what do you think the, the, the biggest advantages or disadvantages of cryptos are? Okay, uh, I, I've been around for a few years and I had also my doubt uh, about the technology, about the market, about all the uh, fishy things that are going on on this uh, free free market uh, approach. So yes, you can uh, create new cryptocurrencies. We have uh, many bad actors because uh, it is it is money in the end of the day, and when when money is online, you're inviting the sharks. Hackers, scammers, con artists, etc. So this is maybe the the part that I uh, uh, don't say hackers. Nicola says he's a hacker part time. So <laughs> bad actors, hack, uh, uh, black hackers. He's uh, okay. a, he's a white hat hacker. A good one. One for one of the good ones. Uh, so yeah, I think cryptocurrency is not just a trend that will go go away. We have in the past technologies that really promising so many things but never uh, realized it. Uh, cryptocurrency has so, uh, so many good things and so many interesting uh, perspectives. Uh, again, one of the major that really uh, drove me to this industry is really the technology. Uh, it is really uh, interesting that we have like blockchain technology and the cryptography and consensus algorithms in a so interesting way uh, built up that we can uh, 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 again uh, generate new things, gener generate new systems, new layers of the internet because Bitcoin or uh, other cryptocurrency in my opinion will be the native uh, money, the native money of the internet, because credit cards are broken by design. If you ever use it, I mean, all of us are using credit cards day to day, I guess, uh, but they're broken by design, they're maybe already compromised or something, or, or again on the black market, uh, something has happened with my uh, money, so I trust more uh, this system, so cryptocurrency is also a trust system, a trust machine. Uh, and I really like all the features. Really, it is not a perfect uh, system uh, for for peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, but it is, I think it is more fair and more resilient and uh, future-proof, I think. So again, Bitcoin is now the biggest one, the first one. Uh, everyone is talking about Bitcoin, and it is uh, uh, what's also really important, it's the most uh, secure digital system in the world. So all this, you heard of the miners, all of the uh, computers that are calculating and keeping the, the things running and secure. We, we mentioned this one trillion honeypot of real money, of real people's money in the system is really secure because of all these individuals who are running and calculating for 12 years without uh, a pause uh, this system. And so I think it is a really interesting virtual secure, I don't know, uh, fortress. <laughs> Okay, I would say that then we can all agree that it's a next future thing or it's not next because it's already happening and that we all need to just wait and sit back and see what will happen and how the disadvantages that are now disadvantages become advantages at some point. Um, well, I would like to thank you for your time. Uh, I would like to thank you for, as I said, the different perspective of this, of this topic. I think we actually um, pointed out a great questionable uh, um, things that are right now, as we said, may be disadvantages or can be perceived that, uh, as that, but we can all agree that there are more advantages at this point, at, at least from your perspective and, and your knowledge. So thank you one more time. Um, we are finishing this panel discussion and we see you at the next session. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.